watering gadgets, doodads, thingamajigs, it doesn't matter what you call them, the key is to use them. To discuss the finer points of these doodads is Doug Maurer, president of Brian Kyle's Landscapes of Distinction. Okay, today we had a pretty nice rainfall. Rained last night, rain today, it's supposed to rain tonight and tomorrow. But I just wanted to say, you can always go out and say, hey, I got a half an inch of rain. Well, what does that mean? I don't know. The best thing to do, if you want to check see how your yard's doing, grab a hold of a shovel and dig up part of the turf here and do an inspection. See how deep that rain has penetrated down into the soil. Here we see it's gone down three minimum, at least three to four inches. I'd say that's pretty good. Six would be textbook ideal, but you get it down three to four inches in the middle of August, we're doing good. But Mother Nature doesn't always provide us with that free rainfall which contains all that nice nitrogen and everything, it's a great thing to have. So we have to do some things ourselves. You want to have a nice lawn, you need to sprinkle. So, a couple different types of sprinklers. This is one of those sprinklers that goes around. Uh, impact sprinkler is what they call it. Uh, it has a few adjustments on it. It can travel full circle. It can travel a part circle by some of these adjustments here. You can also work on how far it throws. So if it's thrown out and hitting the driveway in the neighbor's car, you can usually run a set screw into the stream of water, break it up some. And some also have a little flap on the top here that can also be diverted down into that stream of water to help break it up. These are fairly good sprinklers. I will have you note though that this one has a base to it, so it sets firmly on the ground. When you're watering, that water pressure has a tendency to knock this around. If this were sitting on your concrete driveway, I assure you the water, and if you have decent water pressure, unlike the city of Lorraine, uh, but if you have decent water pressure, you could actually watch this thing scooting across your driveway because of that water pressure. Now, this one is an oscillating sprinkler, it goes back and forth. Okay, with this one, it shoots more of a rectangular or square pattern. It's good for most lawns because most people's yards have a tendency to start out square. With flower beds and whatnot, they don't always end up totally square, but they start out that way, so this one works fairly good. It's limited as far as what you can adjust it. You can adjust sometimes the amount that it goes back and forth so it doesn't go 60 feet wide, you can make it uh, 40 feet, 20 feet wide, and such as that. But other than that, there's not a lot of adjustment on it, but these do come with a good base, and they're not going to move anywhere, they're not going to go anywhere. The ones you want to avoid or watch out for are the ones, particularly in this brand, when they have a little spike. You put that spike down into the ground, and generally it's hard to get it into the ground because the ground's like concrete. But once you get it into the ground, it softens up as you're watering and this thing begins to rotate around. Next thing you know it's flopped over, shooting up in the air and that's the end of your watering program and if you're not paying attention to it, you might be watering like that for the next 20, 30 minutes. Now, this little bad boy, a little turtle guy here I got, kind of nice, it's a traveling sprinkler. You can adjust these so that they shoot kind of up, down a little bit, that'll control the width of the trajectory that you're covering here and you stretch a hose out across your yard some of them have a cable that you can stretch out this particular model has a hose so it travels with these wheels guided along the hose as it travels at the end of its travel you don't have to worry about falling asleep on the couch it travels up over this comes to rest on its belly and there's a shutoff switch on the belly which will shut the sprinkler off. Once the sprinkler is shut off, you come back from shopping or whatever it was you were doing, you come back, set it up in another track somewhere and let it go. You can usually adjust the, the travel speed from a, a low to a medium to a high because this will adjust the amount of water that hits one particular area. Low speed, you'll do more watering. High speed is just for a quick, quick coverage. Now, that kind of covers the lawn in a general nutshell. You do want to water. I, you know, it's been a hot, dry summer. 
you do want to water. We learned from back in the drought of 88, those people that didn't water, uh, it'll come back. No, it won't. Uh, if the crown of that plant dies, it's gone. Now, one is pretty forgiving. I've actually brought a couple shrubs in here that did dry out. You know, these plants, they all want to live. Their first line of defense is for the leaves to dry up and fall off. You can see this one's pretty well dried up, They're trying to fall off. But this one died back probably about two months ago. We kept watering it, and you can see all this new growth coming. So now if we come in here and trim off all this dead growth up on top, this plant will rejuvenate itself and do just fine. We lost this year out of it, but next year you'll never know the difference. Here's another example. We have this one, got too dry, and the leaves have dried up. Some of the stems have died back, but most have stayed alive. And you'll notice that there's new sets of leaves coming out on this plant right here. These new leaves are a little smaller in nature than the initial leaves. Here's an initial leaf compared to the newer leaf, but this plant is trying to live, and it will cycle through this year, go through the winter, and next spring when it begins to bud out, you can check for a little bit of dieback on it, trim the dieback off, and again, no one will be any the wiser for it, this plant will do just fine. So don't give up on some of these plants when, if you miss a watering. I will caution you, however, over watering, it won't work that way. That's like drowning. You drown that plant, it's done. So keep them moist, not drowned. And one way to check is simple test with your finger, run your finger down inside the pot or down inside the soil, in particular where it's growing, and just check, see how it's doing. Here's another plant, died back, it's a perennial, but again, you can see some new growth coming on it. Now, we wanna water some of our shrubs so this doesn't happen. They do make, if you don't have a professionally installed uh, misting system or whatever, drip system in your, in your beds, uh, you can go to the store, you can purchase this hose. It, it just sweats, like I'm doing right now. It sweats and gives a nice even distribution of water. A plant needs a little more water, wrap it around two or three times. Plant needs a little less, just run by it. And let it run for about an hour or two, come out and check, see what it's doing. And this is generally a pretty good way to get the water into those roots. Remember, on plants, do not overwater maybe water once a week, that's general. The grass, however, you can water every other day, maybe every day now that it's so hot and dry. But generally, grass needs a little more water than the shrubs. So in a nutshell, with my friends Yogi and Boo Boo behind me, that's how to kind of keep your landscape looking nice and clean. Thanks, Doug. This has been part of the Brian Kyle's Landscapes of Distinction how-to series. To learn more, please visit www.briankiles.com or visit our YouTube page at youtube.com slash briankiles.